Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm a big woodworker running a small business out of an even smaller shop. Today I'm going to walk you through the latest addition to my little workspace here, which is this uh, 30 by 30 CNC from uh, CNC Labs. It's their long mill version, fantastic Canadian company. I paid for the CNC, bought it, ordered it, all my own. I did a ton of research on this, looked at them, looked at Onefinity, looked at Chipoco, decided I wanted Canadian. Onefinity charges exorbitant shipping fees to ship something in Canada. Like we're talking like six, seven, eight hundred bucks US, depending on what you get to ship from Canada to Canada. So anyways, long story short, I think they probably have a cool product, but really in love with what I got from CNC Labs here. My focus of this video is going to be to show you what I did, how I built a spoil board. The main goal I wanted to achieve with this is something I could spend the time, set it up, and then as I work through it, resurface it a few times, and then replace the MDF. So that's what I've done here. Use some T-Track, use some dog holes, screw it down. I'm going to screw the T-Track down into the table so that in the future, when I do need to replace the MDF, it's just cut new pieces, pull out these pieces, put them in, clamp them in using the T-Track, recut all the screw holes, and off to the races. But yeah, watch along, see how I did it, and I hope you enjoy. I built the spoil board out of three quarter inch MDF. I felt like it's fairly flat and adds some stability and it's what all the cool YouTubers do. You could easily build this out of a half a sheet and I happened to have a scrap piece that worked out perfectly for me. I ripped it in half here with my track saw just so I could get a more manageable piece to put through the table saw. And then I just took it over there and I ripped it into a whole bunch of four inch strips. I needed seven four inch strips to make this, so that's what I got. You can see I still have this huge bunk bed in my shop. I'm running a few weeks behind on this project, but getting near to the finish line and I can't wait to see it delivered. Next up, I put my dado blade into my table saw. This probably wasn't strictly necessary as I just needed to run a 3 16 inch groove on each side of these pieces. This will perfectly cover the part of the T-track that isn't used for the clamp to progress through and will help hold it down so that it's nice and firm. It took a few minutes, but I just passed each board through carefully on each side, used a feather board here to help keep things nice and tight, and that was that. Then over on the CNC, I moved it around to mark out with a V-groove bit, the exact position of each corner. This will help me line up the pieces as I go to lay everything out and uh, get ready to, to screw it into place. It's a pretty cool trick. You can just move it back and forth and yeah, Bob's your uncle. Nice square clean lines on each corner. With those reference corners marked out, I just took my tape measure and quickly measured the exact length that I needed the slats to be and the overall width of the cutting area. I knew it was around 32 by 34, kind of in that range, but I measured it out and it was exactly 33 by 32 for my setup. I felt it would be a gift to future Ryan just to write down what those dimensions are so that when I do need to remake these in the future, I have it there. I guess I'd have the pieces and I could measure it from that, but well, I didn't really think about that, so yeah. I used my miter saw to cut uh, each piece up to the right length here. You could kind of see that if you uh, look around me. I guess uh, camera angle placement is not my, my forte there, but anywho. I thought I'd double check here just to make sure that everything's the right size after cutting one. And honestly, it's a good thing I did because I set my stop to the width of the table, not the length, which is a shorter dimension. So luckily I had one spare because, well, I just used it. With that rookie mistake out of the way, I set the stop to the proper length for these pieces and just went through and cut them all. Nothing too exciting after that. Then it was time to lay them out and to put the T-track in. I thought it would be good here just to kind of measure the overall width. I knew there would be a little bit on each side and I wasn't quite sure how I was going to deal with that. But I went through and I put the T-track in between each one and kind of held it together. And I was able to measure the total distance to the side. It worked out to be, I think, about... 13 sixteenths for each side. I then took one of the offcuts I had and I uh, used just a normal ripping blade in my table saw. So I guess uh, that answers the question of whether or not the data was necessary. It in fact is not. And use that to rip the groove to cover the T-track on both sides. It's a little bit spicy working in this cramped area here, but it's not too big of a deal. I, I felt pretty safe or I wouldn't have done it. With the dado ripped into both sides, I set the fence over to that 13 16 and just ran the piece through on both sides. This is not my favorite. Probably there's a better way to do it. I use a little piece of wood offcut as a push stick here so I can push it through the blade, but I don't love 
long, skinny, light pieces of wood going through the table saw. But I managed to get it done with no brakes tripped and all fingers still attached, so there's got to be something said for that. Another quick test fit here with the end pieces and everything looks perfect. We're almost exactly the total width of the cut surface, so I couldn't be happier with that. The T-Track I bought was 36 inches and I debated leaving it a little bit long, but I thought aesthetically I liked it better if it all matched, so I just used the same setting on the miter saw and then I went slow and I cut down each piece of this aluminum T-Track to the same length and that was that. I don't love cutting aluminum, but it's fine. It works. One day I'd like to have metal only saws, but again, you know, it, it just works if you go slow and you don't mind the odd piece of sharp metal fragments hitting your hand. I hummed and hawed about the best way to temporarily attach this to the table. I debated using long pieces of wood, kind of like calls along the width of the table and just clamping it on the edges to hold it while the CNC cut the screw holes, but it really wasn't much room with the rails and everything just kind of felt awkward. So I ended up using some of this cool double-sided tape, which honestly, I'll put a link in the description for this. This double-sided tape is fantastic. I've mentioned it in one of my other videos, but I started using carpet tape and it was just horrible. It ripped everything. It ripped the veneers off the plywood. This stuff sticks, it releases, it's just great. So yeah, I just bought a three pack of it and slowly working my way through. But anyways, I digress. I just took the double-sided tape and I put it on the bottom of each one. The end pieces were a little bit tricky because I had to do it and kind of tape down the T-track as well. But every other piece was straightforward. Just one strip, I put it on the side so that I wouldn't cut through the tape with a dog hole and I didn't really care if the screw hole went through, but it was no big deal. So I just taped them down being very careful to try to keep it along the same plane across the front. And one takeaway here, if I were to do this again, I, I absolutely would have dragged that V-bit all the way across the front so I had a straight line to reference to. I ended up about a sixteenth of an inch off at the end of the day when I was kind of done laying them all out. And it's not a huge deal and it won't impact anything. The dog holes and everything are still square and true to the gantry and to the, the frame of the CNC. So you can't tell by looking at it, there's, there's no problem, but just for the sake of having things right, next time I would have dragged that scratch the whole way across. And now sliding this last piece in here, it was time for the fun stuff. I've never used a CNC before. This is truly the first time I've used it. When I built the cam package in Fusion 360, I built it as two separate operations because I don't exactly know how to do a tool change or one operation. But anyways, I built one file that had all the screw holes cut. So I just ran through that, as you can see here. It slowly, uh, probably too slowly, went through and cut all the holes. One little whoopsie I had here is I was holding my dust collector to kind of catch all the MDF dust that was being thrown in the air. I think I kept the x-axis from going all the way down. You can see here these screws are not cut nearly as deep. It took me a second here to figure out what I did, but I'm pretty sure that's what my problem was. So I just let the program finish and then I restarted it. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to start in the middle of a program, but it just kind of cut air through the first holes. And then as you can see here, it went to the ones that I miscut and cut them perfectly. So no harm, no foul. Just a few minutes of wasted time. And with all those screw holes cut, I just used these Torx headed cabinet screws and uh, put one into each hole. I did three rows of two screws. That felt like enough. Uh, yeah, it seems to hold really well and it screwed right into the MDF table beneath it and I was off to the races. And now my shop helper here was pretty interested in learning how the CNC works. So we'd work together to load up the file to cut the dog holes and I put him in charge of pressing the go button while I walked over and turned on the router. He was a little uncertain, but well, he, uh, he, yeah, what's he going to do? Think he'll do it? I think he'll do it. Let's see. Okay, he pushed start and, uh-oh, pop-up. Now what, Dad? Not sure what to do. Thinking about it. Okay, I'll hit resume. And resume it did. Here you can see it's working away cutting the dog holes. Uh, it took about an hour to cut them all. It was pretty, pretty good. I think I had it set to step down way too slow given that it's MDF and not cutting super big holes, but let me know in the comments what you think. I don't quite understand the feeds and speeds thing with this, so I went as conservative as I could. And with that, here you have the finished product. I had to cut this round cutting board that I had, so I had previously flattened it, which was a, a bit of a journey, but I got this board flattened and was able to use the T-Tracks to clamp it down on the corners. I need to get a fourth uh, a fourth clamp here, but I think my repertoire of dog hole and 
T-Track accessories is going to expand pretty significantly here, much to my wife's sugar in. But yeah, just clamped it down and off I went. It cut out perfectly. The material didn't move at all. Previously, I've made these by hand, which works fine. But man, it's just, it's like having another shop helper, right? You can, uh, you can give it a task, let it go to work while you go and work on other things. I have to say I'm pretty impressed. And this is so far completely met my expectations. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Well, that wasn't without its ups and downs, eh? Some real cliffhangers in there as I, you know, did things wrong. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Take a look here at how I fit everything I do into my shop or this other video that YouTube thinks you might like and have a great day.